Right, all right, all right, guys, what's up? We are here with Beyond in the bottom right side, up against the Canadian up and comer Trigger, who already 2 0 max packs in this bracket, and he has got a cheesy all in planned. I think he's gone 12 pylon. This is a very quick cyber core, and uh, it looks like he's going to be proxying a Stargate or a Robo or a Gateway, something like that, in the back of Beyond's base. Beyond, not a big fan of scouting, guys, so he's going straight command center on the low ground. He's waiting for his Reaper to be his initial scout. And, uh, okay, so there's a Zealot coming across, we've got a Stargate and a Battery in the back right behind the Mineral Line! Oh my god, this is so abusive. He's gonna build two Batteries immediately, no Adept or anything, which is interesting. The Reaper could cause him some trouble. Adept does now start up. I think the Adept should have started before these Batteries, but I guess the idea is the Batteries get up early enough that if he finds it, they can gonna heal it. The Zealot is, of course, gonna throw its life away, but he just wants to sacrifice itself, distract the Terran, keep his vision back here so doesn't really find any real damage but that's okay adept will come in behind this and he saved up one two chrono boosts so looks like a really good build here just taking advantage of beyond's back door beyond once again i mean he just plays so blind so regularly you've got to punish players like this by all inning them now remember trigger won a bunch of series versus beyond over the recent months but beyond did beat him at valencia He's going Hellion, Marine Production, Beyond still no idea what's going on. When this Void Ray arrives, he's going to be in big doo-doo. He's going to have to start building Widow Mines immediately, which he has already queued one up. But with only one, two Marines out, that is a disaster. It takes like, I don't know, four Marines, five Marines to beat a Void Ray. And with Shield Batteries as well, it's going to be especially tough. Trying to mass repair is Beyond. He realizes, hey, I can't engage with my Marines until I have a few more units. He's going to need to start building Vikings immediately as well. Trying to mass repair, and he's doing a great job of it. Void Ray happy to engage those Marines, though. Now they see the Shield Battery healing from the low ground, and they're like, oh, you're kidding me, man. Widow Mine will help zone out this Mineral Line, but of course the Void Ray can just hang. And, ooh, just needs to, yep, shuffles it just out of Widow Mine range. Very nice play here by Trigger. Second Void Ray is almost out, but there is a Viking on the way, and remember, he doesn't have a way of- Oh, he's gonna tank it! That was on purpose? He wants to kill that, though, he does not want to let the Widow Mine escape. Very well done. If he can get rid of some of these Marines, that'd be huge. Beyond is in massive trouble, the Adept is finally walking in the front, guys. It's gonna start taking out the SCV on the natural as well. Viking will be popping here, but with the three batteries up, four batteries on the low ground, fifth one coming up. I don't see that void ray dealing with this this is a great all-in that triggers pick doesn't focus the widow mine very quickly though and oh i think he meant to take that shot doesn't end up taking it oh the viking almost goes down you can see these marines are very wounded right now the void ray is able to just keep dealing damage and beyond goes down here that is a nasty spot getting shield batteries up in range of the main mineral line delicious all-in from trigger to start off the series all right, all right, all right, guys. What the hell is Trigger doing? Going into map two, he's walled off his main completely with two gateways. And he hasn't started to clear these minerals up yet. What is he planning? I have no idea what he's got in store for us. His opponent in the top left, Beyond, once again, not scouting. He says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're like, but it did get broke in the last game. It got broke, dude. He's going to build his command center, mine these minerals out, and then lift it and move it. And he's going to be hard to break. Now... Is Trigger literally just going to foregate, warp in with like a pylon here and just run across the map and try to kill him? Two, he's going to do a four stalker pressure, is he? But they're rallied to the inside. I'm so confused right now. <coughs> I also wonder, can a Reaper come here and then bounce himself inside the wall? The Reaper is scouting for proxies right now. He goes reactor after the Reaper and a factory. So very quick factory, guys. This is a gas first opening, I believe, for Beyond. This probe long distance mining. A robo is on the way, as well as... Are we going to see any more units? I'm not sure. Four stalks. What is... Is Trigger just foregating? Is this a... Oh my god, is he just doing... Is, is this just a... This is like a PvP all-in. He's literally just doing a, a three-gate, four-gate robo, something like that. So he... he I think he'll go four gates. Um, But he's, he's just going to chrono a prism, and then he's just going to go and, and all-in the back door with stalker, zealot, stalker, adept, that sort of stuff. Reaper gets in, though. It's a big problem. I don't know why the Stalkers... Oh, because there's a Reaper ledge there, right. But the Reaper's not scouting. That's a big mistake for Beyond, but no, he does end up scouting. Trigger should have moved north to try and cut off that uh, that path, but now Beyond knows what's happening. I mean, this should be an easy defense for him. He's going to try and grenade his way out. No, no, no. Does let it go down. Command center's up. Okay, so what do you do as Beyond to defend this? He's building a medevac. Mate, you've just seen you're getting one base all in. I mean, you've, you've got to realize. 
I'm amazed he's building a medevac, guys. I would have immediately cancelled it and built a viking and used that to try and zone out the prism. I mean, obviously, he could get attacked from so many different angles. Widowmine will spot the front, but he could get dropped here. He could get dropped back here. He's trying to build a tank. More marines. I mean, non-stop marine production is huge. No safety bunker up or anything like that. He does have a depot building in the back. Here, this is what I'm talking about, guys. Four gateways are up. The prism is going to unload in the back. He's going to siege up and try to warp in more stalkers. The marines will come forward, but one marine goes down. Stalker takes a little bit of damage. Tank is not out just yet. He's not going to go for the command center because that is, of course, too tanky. He wants to get in on top of these units. Here we go. Siege tank popping out is going to help out. The SCVs are buffering quite well. But you know what? He goes for the medevac. Does two-shot it. Does it cost him too much, though? The answer is absolutely yes. Goes in way too deep. He needed to pull back for a warp in, but now he can't warp in. So trigger there. Definitely, I think he was doing great damage. He did not need to force his way in there. That was a really bad trade. Six stalkers for a tank, a medevac, and a marine. I don't know. He still might be able to break him because he's just got so many warp ins and, and these units without a bunker or anything. He's going to have to pull so many SCVs to buffer. The Viking, though, really helping out. Trigger's micro just not quite on point, though. You can see him making little misclicks on this. And uh, beyond, I feel like definitely should have died to this build looking at it not building any bunker to fall back on in his production or anything like that i feel like beyond had zero respect for this bush and uh as a result i really think he should have died Mommy. as it is though now he's held on i don't think he can lose anymore the observer is going to see this he's going to try and rotate up there but with a viking there's just no way the prism is way too fragile thanks for the bezos box He's going to try and dive on the tank maybe, but it takes two siege tank shots. That tank has too much range and Adepts would probably be the best play. Shading into the mineral line, out of tank range, trying to get some mobility going, get some mistakes to happen that way would be the, the way to try to work this. He's going to try and get the Viking one repairing SCV though is massive. And it looks like beyond here just with his kind of off the cuff, on the fly defense manages to defend. I, I think 100% parting wins this game. I really do think that Trigger just went a bit too deep, a bit too hard. And especially if he gets a few Zealots or Adepts in there tanking for the Stalkers, it would have been huge. So I think a great idea from Trigger in hindsight, um, realizing that Beyond just does not scout, but messes up a little bit on the execution and Beyond manages to survive this series despite making no safety precautions. All right, guys, he is trying to pull out his dirty tricks to punish the Terran for not scouting. We got Trigger in the top right of the map here, going for that Reaper wall off, and he is once again proxying this time in the top left of the map. Now, it might not be an all in, it might just be a straight up Oracle to dive in the mineral line. Harassment this time around. He is, of course, up against Beyond, who has once again gone gas first, which allows you to go Reaper, high ground CC. The reason you don't go low ground is you can't defend it from a Cybercore first Chrono Boosted Adept. Um, but you also get a factory down at the minute 55. So this is a, I mean, I love gas first. I think it's a really good opening. I used to only do gas first many years ago. And uh, I haven't done it too much against Protoss in a little while, but it definitely still has its strength. The ability to just get out such an early Hellion, Widowmine, Cyclone, depending on the situation is huge. The problem with it is you can't really afford an SCV scout or it messes up the build order. You just don't have any spare minerals. <laughs> if you go for the SCV scout, it's like you might as well just skip the Reaper and go barracks gas and uh, do it that way. Gets in there, sees the adept. Now there is a Nexus up at what is a slightly late timing, but I mean, there's no big tells of this being an all-in. He's going to try and bounce his way in. I don't know if that works. I don't know if this will work. Yeah, as I said, that that that's a bit of a big gap to jump across, so... Oracle is being chrono boosted. There is a Widow Mine first on the way, though, so I feel like beyond here is paying some respect to his opponent and uh, adept out the front. I like Trigger's opening, guys. He's saying, look, I'll punish you, but it doesn't have to be an all-in. Let's just try and get an Oracle in there. But where is the first Widow Mine, guys? Uh, where is it? I don't know. Oh, it's above the reactor. Ooh, that means the Oracle could get some real damage. Reaper pulls back. Oracle dives in right now. And that is a very exposed base. Oh, he didn't focus fire. Oh, I, I, I thought Trigger could have got that Widow Mine if he focused, but I guess Beyond was quick to pull an SCV to repair. So it does make it pretty tricky. Two SCVs is not bad, but definitely not the crazy damage he would have liked. And only a single Oracle in this scenario. Okay, he might build maybe one Phoenix after. The fact though that he's going Twilight tells us, hey, let's just put all of our gas into Blink, chrono that up. And even though you've opened with a Stargate, you actually end up with a pretty standard sort of setup for a Blink style of play. Now, Beyond, though, is going to immediately pick up both Widowmines, go across the map here, 
and there's only one Stalker and two Adepts to defend, and they're outside the base right now, which is not great for him. Interestingly, a Probe is going to this top left side of the map, so he's planning for his own Blink Stalker aggression. He's going to proxy a Gateway up there. That Widow Mine drop is going to come in the main. It's going to be completely undefended. So at two Adepts and a Stalker, all that he's got up right now, and this Widow Mine drop could do some good damage. Oracle revelates the main base, doesn't get any kills though, and the Widow Mine drop comes in. Great reaction by Trigger so far and doesn't lose any probes, not bad at all. Yeah, and the way those stalkers move kind of shove that down there. Ooh, Reaper's gonna get a few kills though. He says, hey, oh, is this a bit too ambitious? Trigger's trying to trying to get, or sorry, Beyond's trying to get Trigger to mess up here. The medevac goes down because of that. Oh, nope, he moved his stalkers in too early. Trigger with some lazy control, there we go. So he ends up losing five probes and a bunch of mining time. That's really neat damage. Uh, there is a second barracks on the way. Raven's already popping out, and we will see. Potentially, does he bother with a gateway up here, I wonder? I'm not sure. I think that's a really good area, and down here is another great area, either there or there, for a proxy gate, because you can just use those like a warp prism to keep doing zealots all game. Oracle does break the cyclone lock and gets on out of there, and we've got this starport. Notice it's being used as an add-on builder. So it's basically preparing tech labs to be used by these barracks and swapped onto, and then only after that will it build its reactor common rookie mistake is to go straight for the reactor and by the time you've got six medevacs out you've only got like eight marines with no stim on them and you're going oh maybe i've gone a bit too early into medevac production now the stalkers here getting ready for the blink in great tank positioning though wanting to utilize the ledge is trigger oh not quite enough stalkers to one shot but he does take it down so not too bad there and we can see at the same time these adepts oh didn't quite click them in the mineral line but good micro by him and oh, look at that. He could actually just kill the bunker potentially. Uh, does decide to pull back from there. The adepts will go down. It's like nice micro by Beyond. And gets both of these adepts. Very well done. Oracle dives in the main base. Remember, the cyclone's dead. It's the Oracle. Oh, he's not really killing all that much. He gets like a, a marine or two. But six more probes did go down behind us. And that was, of course, to the auto turret. Phoenix has killed the Raven, though. So, who's ahead at the end of this? I mean, Beyond's definitely ahead economically, but there is a third up. And how far are we off Stim and Shields? Shields hasn't started yet. He ended up not doing the swap around on the add-ons because he was distracted. So he ends, up, he ends up going for Shields now. So we're going to have about 745 is when Beyond's push will come across the map. So any, any time in the next 30, 40 seconds, Beyond is probably going to be moving out. Oracle dives in the main base. Uh, doesn't really have much energy, so it doesn't turn his laser on. He's just kind of scouting right now. And the problem, of course, is there's no upgrades. So Trigger's kind of fucked. Um, he's got five gates on the way. He's got charge, but he's only equal on workers. He doesn't have any splash damage on the way. He's just going to go sentry, zealot, stalker. And he basically needs to get the sickest force fields, great engagement. He's, he's got a big pack of stalkers. That plus the stasis traps are the things that can buy him a lot of time and maybe pick off some of Beyond's units. Beyond's army is also not that big, even though his upgrades are all kicking in and his medevacs are coming out. He's kind of playing very defensive and turtly, and that's totally fine for the situation he's in. He's got tanks spread across his bases, bio building up. Bad Oracle Micro. He saw the stim. He could have just kept going north and got away there. So Trigger, I feel like just not the best control in this series. He's obviously a very good player. Now, Beyond, thinking about diving out the front there, we always talk about Beyond and how crazy dangerous his drops are in this matchup. Stalkers need to blink back, though. But realizes there's a stasis trap. Good eyeballs there from Beyond. Does not get baited in. And these stalkers can blink across this gap. So he's lost a few stalkers. His other stalkers had gone home for some reason. Lots of zealots coming out of the map. I believe he's up to eight gates now. Indeed he is. And he's got three mineral lines. So it's a pretty decent economy. If Trigger can just win one fight and then deny the third, he'll smash this game. Problem. 21 marines, nine marauders, four medevacs versus 15 zealots. I will take the bio in that scenario any game, especially when they have plus one upgrade and there is no upgrade for the Protoss. Desperation Dark Shrine going down for Trigger right now. If Trigger can squeeze a fourth Nexus in, at least he'll be able to transfer workers out of his main as these mineral patches are now mining out and kind of maintain that income. But as it is, Beyond's playing very calm, very safe, and there's still no splash damage, no scalability. That being said, Trigger does have a plus one upgrade on the way. I think I said he didn't even have upgrades on the way, so sorry about that, guys. I forgot about that forge. Fourth base does go down. Robo is starting. So Trigger will be able to kind of slowly limp into Colossus, into Disruptors, into that splash damage. That could be a big potential. Plus one armor's on the way. Ghost Academy's on the way. 
got Tech Lab Reactor, that's five Barracks Factory Starport. And uh, second Forge goes down for Trigger as well. I mean, Trigger, I kind of feel like he would have died to a dedicated push or a boy pull from Beyond, but Beyond's just like, no, let's just turtle it up. Let's try and play mega safe. He's trying to build turrets now. There's so much space to cover. A Warp Prism can just fly right past that on the left. Not to mention in here. Blink DT is on the way. That's right. Shadow Stride guys. Zealots are posturing in the top left and the bottom right. Ready for the run buys. The bio is going to try to hunt them down though. Whenever you get spotted like that, you want to try and move away so that you can't just get caught. Now for Beyond guys, this is a situation where a lot of Terrans get way ahead in the scenario and then they just grab their whole army and push out the front. If you look at Beyond's vision, that's a really obviously stupid move. What he should do is grab two or three medevacs worth of bio and send it around the whole top left corner of the map, making sure he's clearing up any zealots, clearing up the vision, the watchtower, pylons, gateways. And then he could also send at least some marine spotters, if not the same squad around the right side, to basically just clear up the Protoss's map vision, make the Protoss worried about where he's going to come from, when he's going to come, and make it so it's not, oh, I'm Terran, I get halfway across the map, and then there's 30 zealots in my natural and my third, my whole economy is dead like we see so often. Now Zealots do run in. Look, here we go, exact move I was talking about. He sends two medevacs plus a bunch of extra bio. They can't all fit in there, so it's a little dangerous to clear things up. Now you've got to be careful because a high level Protoss player will hunt you down when you do this. So the thing is he didn't bring enough medevacs for all the bio, so that was a big mistake for Beyond and he kind of has to stand his ground and fight with at least some of the bio. So he, he does focus down a stalker or two, hides in the dead space, well done. But there's a Phoenix here. Oh, oh, I think he forgot about that Phoenix from earlier in the game. Now, it takes about a year to actually kill anything, remember? So he's going to go to the main base. Plenty of Stalkers in there. There's a shitload of Stalkers on this map. 15, man. And the Double Drop does get cleaned up. So, yeah. Once you get spotted like that, you want to go out, clear up some spotting units, and then pull it back. And then come back like 30, 40 seconds later after they've moved down, haven't found you, and pulled back to a central position. Because... At a high level. Oh, look, the Observer barely gets gets outside of Observer Vision. But these sentries in the middle of nowhere are not the best for them to be there. They should definitely force field to save themselves. But Trigger, not watching, does lose both sentries. It's a bit of a bummer. And <laughs> okay, one sentry. But the other one has to use all its energy anyway. Ah, this is what I'm talking about. It's all about map control. It's about sweeping up the edges of the map. Same thing on like 2000 Atmos. Any map with lots of corner space... Lots of run by paths, you've got to be careful of that. Now, in terms of the tech guys, Colossus is on the way. The first two Colossus are coming out, but they don't have Viagra yet. Keep in mind, Trigger's very low on gas. He's only on one, two, three, four, five gases. He has a fifth base up, which he'll be sending workers to mine the minerals. But uh, yeah, it feels like he's not really progressing as far in the tech as he needs to. And I think he's got to realize that Beyond's in mega turtle mode. Trigger should be building three gases right now. And to not do that means he's just going to Oh, especially with losing all these zealot trades, he's just going to get overrun, maybe. I mean, he's still got one big army. Maybe he can win this fight. He's got one Colossus out. Viagra started up. Two more Colossus are building as well. Second Colossus popping. Kind of want to kill this gateway just so your Colossus can rally out of your main a little cleaner. Um, this fifth base down here, very hard to defend. It will go down. There's no way he can defend this. It's not the end of the world for Trigger. Oh, he takes a big Widow Mine and big EMPs. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Battery overcharge just to try and keep himself alive here. And the Doom Drop straight in his face into the main. Oh my god, what a Chad. Now, if he recalls his whole army there as well, he's got to recall these Zealots, I think. Oh man. The Stalkers are trying to blink up there to defend the production. Beyond really creating a nasty situation. And he's just going to rotate now, I think. He's going to maybe try and move, but... Yeah, the Zealot Stalker's kind of filtering in. Colossus, pull back, pull back, Daddy Colossus. Okay, the Colossus laser beams finally come in there. And it looks like one medevac goes down, but it was not the one with the units in it. Great trading for Beyond, two to one efficiency. His fourth is now up, his two twos finished. So he's maintaining a very small upgrade lead. It's not really, I mean, it's it's basically equal upgrades for all intensive purposes. Second starport's on the way. How many barracks have we got? He's up to eight barracks as well. He's added the three more barracks. Oh, man. So Trigger's economy is really hurting. His army's not as big. He's got four Colossus, but no Disruptors right now. And even though he's got Blink DTs, it feels to me still like Trigger only now is getting into a few extra gas geysers. He has no gas to spare. One bad fight and he's dead. I mean, this army could just get overrun at any moment. His army's super split is Trigger, but he has a much weaker army that could get overrun. He's got to just run away. Run, 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 run away. The rest of his army's going to come in and try and flank this. 
but those Widow Mines will clear up a lot of the Zealots on the right side. Colossus flank on the left looking decent. Can he clear through the tanks and the ghosts though? He needs another big round of Zealots to keep this going. Colossus doing alright here though. These three Colossus may be doing okay. One Colossus does fall. There's only one tank left. Once again though, losing all your Stalkers is just so expensive. And even though Beyond's lost a few more resources, the recent fight being a bit more quote-unquote even, you've got 76 SCVs. Massive income advantage. Beyond does do the Beyond. Starts plus three armor, but forgets to start plus three attack. Remember guys, always build your engineering bays in different locations so that you can't check the upgrades. It's what we call a pro maneuver. Um, Max Pax likes to do that as well. Just throw down his forges anywhere so it's harder to chrono boost. He's like, I'll chrono here and then have to go up here to chrono here. Uh, I'm obviously kidding. Pros do sometimes make things a bit harder for themselves than it needs to be. Now Trigger... He's way behind in this game. He's trying to make disruptors just a couple at a time. Had to do a quick pause. His cat jumped on the keyboard, no doubt. Widow Mind drops coming in as well. Even just this little bit of harassment to keep Trigger busy. Going to make it hard for him to get back in this game. There's no cannons on this base. And you don't really want to be building cannons at this point either. Oh, target fires. Very nice. Observer sees the army here on the right side. These probes need to go back to mining, bro. They can just go... Oh, he accidentally sends them all there, which means he's not mining on that base at all. Cannon goes down immediately on this base. Battery overcharge could go down. Uh, looks like he's confident he can push back beyond. He's out of balls, though. I think he's got to be careful. And again, beyond has to be careful as well. Ah, oh, triggers balls there. Wandering a little too far forward. Battery overcharge comes in a bit too late. And there's just not enough meat here for trigger. With EMPs landing on his army, I mean, he's just trading too badly. 12 probes have gone down there. And uh, we can see just the huge amount of damage. That was this Widow Mine, I think, firing again before it did get taken out by the cannon. Really unfortunate here for Trigger to just be kind of slowly falling behind, never really getting himself back into the game. I, I would have liked to see him be exceptionally greedy at some point. Let's be real, he probably would have just died if he did that, but it just feels like he's, uh, he's kind of uh, dead in the water at this point and beyond business as usual. So how Beyond likes to play PvT, he's like, dude, yep, just do... Do a little bit of uh, all the basic things in the most standard way possible. Very slowly and methodically move forward through each stage of the game. And then randomly grab your army, pick it up and drop it in their main every now and then. Beyond is, uh, he's like so, he looks like Hero Marine used to look in this matchup. But then every now and then he just YOLOs his army like a crazy man. Often with great success. Plus three attack will finally catch up. What's the army comp? 8 Vikings, 22 Marauders, 18 Marines, 5 Ghosts, 5 Medivacs. It's a very good army. Could use some more Ghosts, and he is indeed building those now. There's only 2 Colossus, 15 Zealots, and 3 Disruptors. Only 2 of those Disruptors out over here. 1 Colossus falls before the fight even really begins. The Disruptors trying to keep this army at arm's length, but unable to. Nice Zealot run by on the 3rd base. We'll get a bit of damage. But with the Rally of Bio coming in, nice EMP and a bit of the SCVs turning to hold the line could do very well. Disruptor gets a Marauder there. It's the point of the game where you need more than a single Marauder kill. And the Ghost's gunning down those Zealots. Big ball, but big focus fire. Another big focus fire. And the Disruptor's unable to connect. And you can see they're just pushing on through. Beyond there, power overwhelming. Trigger trying to take advantage of his opponent's very predictable play and lack of scouting. And was very close to getting the 2-0, but Beyond manages to weather the storm and he makes it to the next stage. GG, well played.